So, to those of you who predicted the mystery aircraft hanging out on the runway was a tanker, you are correct, it is an A3K Sky Tanker, which is based on the A3B Sky Warrior. And I just decided I'd rather just call it a Sky Tanker, because that's what it is, it's not a warrior. But, uh, that's, that's what we got. Got wing position toggle and the lock toggle, because it does have foldable wings, because this was a Navy aircraft. Believe it or not, this monstrosity can fit on a carrier and land on the carrier and such and you can see we also have some flaps and I just have to remind myself how these controls work before I forget 9012 and the reason why is because unlike in most of these videos I'm not going to launch the one that I'm showing you here in the SPH I'm actually gonna go to the one that's already landed and here we are oh interesting bug somehow the alligator hinge has moved outside of the aircraft that is fascinating. I don't know how that happened. I'm actually going to recover this one and pull out another one because of that issue. I assume it has something to do with Kerbal Crash System, but before I do the obvious thing that I just said I was going to do, I'm going to do something stupid, which is, let's see how well she takes off from here if, oh, the engine's not on. Uh, yeah, let's turn that on. You know what? I just remembered this has a very low thrust to weight ratio. I don't think she can do this. It will definitely be interesting to find out, though. In fact, I think the landing gear is bugged, too, because this is not reacting at all how it should be. That is fascinating. I don't know how that happened. I didn't crash into it. You know, normally I would expect that kind of damage to be from crashing into it, but I didn't do that. Yeah, she's definitely not going to be able to take off in this condition. <laughs> now, the way I provide this craft file is with the wings locked in position, ready for takeoff, because of course if you're going to load it in, you're probably ready for takeoff. But as you can see, it is quite capable of putting them into a locked stowed position, as I've just done. And then of course I can unlock that, put them out into their position again, and I'm watching the electric charge because I want to watch that to know when it is safe to lock them, because if you try to lock them while they're moving, especially if one is moving and the other is not, then you get asymmetric locks and it screws up using the action groups, and then you're going to have to like clip your camera in and manually right-click things. But as you can see, we now have them stabilized in position. I'm going to throttle up, engage thrust. Also, I just noticed and completely forgot about this before, but that other version had two engines. This did not work very well, so I made it four engines so that we could have a little bit more reasonable thrust to weight ratio. As you can see, it's still below one, however it is going to climb up fairly close to one, but I just figured this would be a better way of doing things. So here we go. I'm going to engage the flaps, which as you can see are just these. These are the ailerons because I didn't want to put ailerons on the hinge position of the aircraft. You can see we can take off quite easily, obviously. I went faster than I absolutely needed to. I've accidentally engaged the thrust reversers for a split second there when I meant to disable the flaps. Previously on some craft, I've used flaps on the uh, ailerons, but in this particular case, I did not because it has an issue with... Wow, we're actually... Uh... Okay, the thrust on those engines may be a little higher than I, uh, than I mean it to be. Yeah. That's okay, though. It's better for... Uh being able to maintain a better speed, and of course you can always throttle down, but you can't add more engines. I mean, you can't add more throttle if you don't have more engines. And uh, this, the downside of having these be the ailerons and in the position they're in, they don't have quite as much authority as they would have all the way out here, and also as there's only one set of very small elevons for the ailerons, they are not the strongest, but it works quite well for my purposes. Also, let's try and level ourselves out just a little bit there. Now, one problem with this, because I wanted to replicate the look of it somewhat better by having this uh, probe coming out the front, and I decided to use a wing for that probe, we do have asymmetric lift, which of course means that this thing is having to constantly apply a very slight rolling force to keep us level, and so obviously that's a bit of a downside. As I mentioned briefly, this does have thrust reversers, which toggling in midair is a very stupid idea, but uh, as I've just demonstrated, you can quite easily do it, and you can see that I'm cruising at a comfortable speed, even with the throttles not maxed out at this low of an altitude. What I'm going to do now, though, because I am in position to do it, 
Let's fucking land at the island runway. I haven't done that in a while. I don't know if this can do it. It better be able to do it, considering this is inspired by a carrier-based craft. It should definitely be able to do it. Also, you can of course do a very stupid thing and fold up the wings mid-flights, but don't do this. This is stupid, and also, in real life, wouldn't work, can't work. Probably can't work, to be fair, I don't know if it actually can or not. But it probably would be very bad for you and everyone involved. So just, just don't do it. Now the thing is, we're still gaining altitude. That's why I throttled down quite a bit. I'm gonna go ahead and deploy the flaps, even though we're way early for needing them. And I'm actually going to deploy the landing gear as well, because that should increase our drag as well. I'm trying to reduce our speed. I don't remember off the top of my head what the minimum flight speed is. I would have remembered better if I had taken off at the minimum speed, but instead I used the full length of the runway and took off at a much higher speed. So, I have no idea how this landing is going to go. It should be interesting, but uh, hopefully it'll be fine. Number one thing that I'm going to need to remember to do as I go for touchdown, I'm going to go ahead and enable the brakes now, but the number one thing I need to do is very quickly throttle up the engines to maximum as I engage the thrust reversers, because bad things happen if I don't do that, obviously. And this plane's quite easy to fly. Also, it's... the, the way I did the tail is, uh, I'm actually quite proud of that. It's not a design I've ever done before, but, uh, it seemed appropriate for this particular craft, and I feel quite happy with how it turned out. I also wish I could remember exactly where I saw the Sky Warrior recently that made me think about making one in KSP, but uh, I did, and this is the result. I'm not quite sure what my altitude is relative to the beginning of the runway, and our attitude is completely off, but that's fine. And I've engaged full thrust reverse and full throttle. And you see we had a bit of a rough touchdown there, but it's okay. Also, one thing that is different in this particular craft from the majority of craft that I make is that uh, the front steering wheel is fully enabled at all times. And as you can see, we are going to use the full length of the runway here. And we just had a flame out. Oof. We're actually going to go off the end of the runway here. <laughs> Ah, uh, part clipping is fun. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Part of the problem with this is that you can have a flame out. And you can see I'm having that flame out again right now, even though we're at a uh, pretty low position. I thought I fixed the suspension on these. I did, but apparently not enough for it taking severe weird damage. And I do mean weird damage, because look at the way this is uh, spazzing out on the back here. It's just a just a bit crazy. In any case, other than the random bouncing, we're doing okay. I'm going to go ahead and throttle down, take us off of the landing gear to reduce that. And uh, everything's fine, just ignore the massive leaks on the left engine nacelle and the main body. Of course. Those are normal. I said lying completely lying. Let's just eject it. We don't need it anymore. See? It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. And remember to fold up your wings when you're done flying. Thanks for flying, flying stupid airlines. Have a nice fuck.